Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Hess. I'm a Power Platform developer, and I've been working on this Power App for maybe, you know, a, a few weeks or so. I kind of took a break and I came back to it. And so there were some comments in the YouTube, you know, how do we patch it? So I went through many different ways that you could patch this SharePoint list. I don't want to tell someone this is the way you should patch. There's many different ways that people could like to write to their data source, or maybe there's a different user experience that you may like, but we're gonna go through a few different ways that I patch the SharePoint list. Now there's many different ways to patch, and when I say patch, I mean we're gonna write to SharePoint, and we're gonna show how to write new line items and how to edit old line items. Now, when you think about patching, think of it like Power Automate. What's your trigger? What's gonna trigger your ability to patch? So if we have a button and we're outside of the gallery, we can easily patch my SharePoint list, which is project task list. And the one that we can patch is gallery one.selected. So we're saying, hey, where, where do we wanna edit? Where do we wanna update the line item and patch to? So the one that we have selected, we're going to patch. We can say, patch the title with the text title dot text, and you know, patch the priority with the text priority dot text. And let's see, we need a semicolon here, that fixes it. I don't wanna go through all of them, you understand, okay? So now we're gonna patch, if we change this task one to task 10, <clears throat> and this will be at the bottom of my SharePoint list and we can change priority to high. We can see right now it's actually task 11 down here. If I patch, hit the button, it's gonna write task 10 and high priority at the very bottom down here. So now it says task 10. Now let's say we wanted to write a new line item. So if we wanted to write a new line item, we would take out the gallery one dot selected. So all I have to do is say, hey, you know, patch high risk task. It's gonna patch a new line item at the very top, high risk task, it's number 52. Although it's not showing in my gallery, I, I could make this descending. Let's, so now we can definitely see the last ones in our column. So we have my top um, ones at the top in SharePoint are up here. My top line items are now up here. All right, so that's one way to patch is we can just patch from the outside and whichever one we select, we can patch. Now, if we wanted to patch from inside, we could create a button. And this will be my next save button. And for this one, I'm just gonna copy the statement, put it in, I'll leave the on select, the select parent there, but inside the patch statement, in the property that we're going to patch, we're gonna say this item. So now we have a button all the way down on every single one. I can hide the button, going to visibility and saying if this item is selected, then we can see it, else it's false. So only if that item is selected, we'll see the button. We can then make a change. Um, this is my new task two, hit save. It's going to update, this is my new task right here, it's going to change it to the number two. So that's two different ways we can patch. Another way is using the for all statement. So we can do a for all and patch everything if we want to. So we can say for all, gallery one dot all items. Uh, let's patch the project task list with this record. And we're saying this record because we're in a for all statement. So for this record, patch the title, which is text title dot text, and the priority, which is the text priority. I got two some uh, two colons in there. Priority dot text, and one more parentheses there. So this is going to patch everything. So let's say I change this to two, this one to three, and we'll put a two down here and a two down here. We hit save. 
it's going to patch everything all the way straight down. So it's going to patch everything all the way straight down that you can see in the gallery. So if you really wanted to make a, a separate gallery or you could make an arrow, so you only see the top 50, then you see the top 100, um, et cetera, et cetera. You could patch the entire gallery that way. Another option is to use a collection. So let's say we have a button. So we're going to use this button right here, this save button. And let me highlight this top row. We're going to use this save button. And on the save button, on select, what we can do is we can collect. And we can collect um, a change. So that's just the name of my collection. Um, and then we can say, okay, what are we going to collect? We're going to collect uh, the title. And that's going to be text, title, dot text. And then priority. And that's text, priority, dot text. All right, so now we're collecting um, a few fields. You have to be very careful when you do it this way because the titles need to match up perfectly. So priority has to match up perfectly with your SharePoint or your data source. So if you have spaces in there, you have to match them up perfectly. And if it's a number, it has to be a number. So when you do it this way, you have to be very careful. The Power Apps will fight you a little bit when you try and do it this way. We're collecting. So we can collect here. We can move down, collect again, collect again. We can collect, you know, four items. And let's go take a look at that um, collection. Now, one thing I did realize is that I am missing the, the ID. I do need that ID field. So let me pull in the ID field also. So on the collect button, we also want to collect the ID as text ID dot text. And this needs to be a number. So actually this will be value. Okay, so we also collected that ID. So let me clear the collection. So let's recollect a few things. So we'll collect here this one and this one. And then we'll make a change. So let's edit this one and, and name it, just name it change. And then we'll collect. So let's check out our collection. So name it change is there. So now let's patch that collection. So here, this was the old patch statement. Let's do for all, the collection change. Let's patch the collection change, oh no, let's patch the SharePoint list, the project SharePoint list, and we can just patch the collection change. I'm pretty sure we can just do it straight up like that. So we have name it change here is ID 36. So let me move over this uh, just a little bit. That's over there. And then we have ID right here. So ID 36, name it change, is going to be our main uh, notice that we're going to see. So 36 right now, we'll hit save. It's writing. It's writing that collection. So 36 right here is now changed to name it change. So that's another way to patch these collections. Um, after the save, we probably also want to uh, clear the collection. <clears throat> so you can't clear collect on a for all because it's looping through. So it would clear as it for all so you have to do the clear after you do the for all that's another option um, for how to patch this if you'd like finally another way you could patch and, and I probably don't recommend this is you know I was talking about how you could use you know what is your trigger you could go to the text uh, title here and do it on the change so you could patch um, the SharePoint list and which record you would say this item and you could patch the title as text title dot text. So when you once you make the change, it will then patch. So this is another option. So this one high risk. This is my first task. So it's just a new one. And then as soon as I click down, it just wrote. 
So let's check that out right here. This is my first task. That's another way to uh, write to SharePoint. It depends on how many times you wanna hit the SharePoint database or your data source. So that is another option is to use the on change property and just you know write on the change from low to high, boom. Oh well, I didn't set it up on priority actually. So we could set it up on priority also. Well, you have to be careful when you set it up on priority because with SharePoint, title is required also. So don't remove title. You also need the title to patch to. So now when I do my on change, and I can even change it to something, you know, far different because I don't have it set up as a choice field. It's, it just then wrote that to the priority the priority far different. So it is just a text field. I don't have it as a dropdown. Obviously you could change that to a dropdown if you wanted, but those are all your different ways that you can patch this. I'm sure there's more ways that you could do it. You could probably put check boxes down the side and said, if this item, you know, the check if the check box is true, then patch those, you know, that's another option. Let's see if I can do that real quick. So let's see here. We'll move over the text just a little bit. And we'll insert in here a checkbox. Uh, let's see, a checkbox. So we'll insert a checkbox. And I'll just hide what it says there. And we'll come in here and we'll make a couple changes. Change one. And on this one, we'll do change two. And then we'll check both of these. Okay, so we have both of those checked. So now we'll say, so we'll start off with for all and then we'll say the gallery one dot all items. And we could just say if um, checkbox and what is that? That's checkbox three. If checkbox three dot value equals true, then we'll patch um, where we're going to patch the SharePoint list. And we're going to patch the this record. And then we'll patch the title as text title dot text. And the priority as text priority dot text. And another parentheses there. Let's see if I need one more. So if that is true, um, then we're gonna patch. Else we're gonna do nothing. So let's see if this works. Change one, change two. Um, they are updated. Let's change this to change three. And oh yeah, I still have, that's why it's changing. <laughs> I still have it on the on change property. Let me remove that. So it was already patching. So let's fix that. Okay, so now this is change seven and change 77. All right, now it should not patch. Okay, if I refresh, it's not patched yet. Now when I hit save, after I check both of them, I want these two checked. I hit save, boom, boom, those both become unchecked and it patches just those two. So let's just double check and make sure it's only when I have it checked. So I'll change this one to 777 and this one to change, just change. So I only wanted to patch this one. Okay, so change seven should not change. We'll hit save. Change seven, seven did not change. The check mark went away. 777 did change. And so it patched there. So there's another way you can patch um, your SharePoint list. I don't wanna tell you how you should do it. This depends on your Power App and how you have things set up. There's many different ways to patch. You have to decide which way you like and which way you know the user interface, the user experience would like. How would your users like to see how they can save? Do they wanna collect first? And maybe when you collect, you have a pop-up that says, okay, these are the items that you collected. So you just have to decide which way you like to patch. Maybe it's the on change, maybe it's the collection, 
Maybe it's the for all statement. Maybe it's just a simple button on each line. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. I went through you know many different ways to patch. You decide which one you like and then patch your own Power Apps. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.